Hi and welcome back to my YouTube channel, the random access memory of me, Anachan. And today I'm going to be continuing on from my previous video, looking at the why of binomial expansion. In my previous video, I looked at coming up with a law for multiplying n brackets together where each bracket can have any number of terms. And I proved this law, which states that to expand n brackets, where each bracket can have any number of terms, you must find the sum of all possible mega terms, i.e. you add all the possible mega terms together, where a mega term is the product of exactly one term from each bracket. So how can I apply this law to a more specific case of a plus b to the power of n, where I'm multiplying or expanding n brackets of a plus b? as you might be able to see here. Well, clearly, as I'm multiplying one term and exactly one term from each bracket, if I'm to look here, I'm either multiplying an A or a B from each bracket. And since I'm selecting one term from each bracket, I am multiplying N terms together to form a mega term. Or in this case, three terms together to form each of my mega terms. And to expand this a plus b to the power of 3, or expand three brackets of a plus b, I must find the sum of all possible mega terms and add them together, whether they are like or not like. So, this means that since I'm multiplying n like terms together, where each term is either an a or a b, this means that the powers of each mega term must add up to n. What I mean by that is, if you look here, in the expansion of a plus b cubed, each of my mega terms, for each of my mega terms, the sum of the powers is always 3. So here's 3 plus 0, because b to the power of 0 is equal to 1 a squared times b to the power of 1, 2 plus 1 is equal to 3, 1 plus 2 is equal to 3, 0 plus 3 is equal to 3. And this applies for n, because I'm multiplying n things together. And the powers, so like a cubed tells me I'm multiplying three a's together, just count the number of a's I'm multiplying together. So this means that, say I multiply k b's together, this means I must multiply n minus ka is to those kbs to form a mega term. So this means I can write the expansion of a plus b to the power of n as m zero times a to the power of zero a to the power of n sorry b to the power of zero. And the reason why I'm including this coefficient of m zero is because sometimes we get like mega terms. So in the expansion of a plus b cubed, if I get an a from this bracket and an a from this bracket from my first two brackets, but then I select the b from my final bracket, that's a mega term in the form of a squared b. But if I pick an a from this bracket and an a from the third bracket, so an a from the first and third brackets, but a b from my second bracket, that's another mega term of a squared b. And then finally, if I pick a b from my first bracket, but two a's from my final two brackets, my second and third bracket, I've got another mega term of the form a squared b. So that means I've got three mega terms of the form a squared b, three like mega terms. And since they are like mega terms, I can add them together. So this is why this is equal to dot dot dot, just means there's other expansion going on. Three a squared b plus some other things, which is why we have the coefficient or a number in front of the th a squared b, b or a squared b to the power of one, because there are three mega terms that are of that form. So m zero counts the number of mega terms there are of the form a to the power of n times b to the power of zero when I expand m brackets, and similarly I would let m one define the number of mega terms of a to the power of one of n minus 1 times b to the power of 1 plus m2 a to the power of n minus 2 b squared plus dot 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 but I'll show what my general term is m of k to 
times a to the power of m minus kb to the power of k. So this is the number of terms of a to the power of n minus k times b to the power of k that I multiply together, or add together, sorry, because that's the number of like megaterms or the number of megaterms of the form a to the power of n minus k, b to the power of k, where I multiply k b's and n minus k a's, that form when I expand n brackets of a plus b. And then we can let this add up any more terms of m n a to the power of 0, b to the power of n. So, now, to figure out what the binomial theorem is, I just have to work out what m k is. m of k is the number of mega terms of the form a to the power of m minus k times b to the power of k that form from this expansion, right? So, if we look back at the more specified case of a plus b cubed, when I say I choose an a from the first bracket and a from the second bracket, I could say those are my two a brackets, where an a bracket means I'm selecting an a from that bracket. Because I can't select more than one term, I can't select less than one term, I have to select exactly one. So I have to pick A or B. Similarly, my two A brackets could be the first bracket and the third bracket, with my B bracket being the middle bracket, or the second bracket. And my two A brackets could be the second bracket and the third bracket, and my B bracket would be the first bracket. But this is mere like tabulation, so like I'm just listing all the possible cases and working them out. How could I find a much quicker way of working this out? Well, using this kind of terminology and idea of me having each bracket being an A bracket or a B bracket, say I've got N brackets lined up together, which is kind of what is true, like up there, where I've got N minus K A's, and KB's, one, two, three, I don't know how many K is, it's just a natural number, so it's a counting number. So I've got N terms that I can put into these brackets. So the N, if I put B into this bracket, it means I choose B from that bracket. So in a way, it's like the number of ways there are of me choosing K brackets, out of n brackets to be b brackets. It's like the number of ways there of me choosing k items from a group of n distinct items, where the order of my choice doesn't matter. This is why this is equivalent to n choose k. And that's where the term choose comes from. But how can we work this out? which was already up on there, but I try explain how to get there. So, one way we could look at this is by making all my A's distinct and all my B's distinct. And the reason why is because it's a bit easier to work out how many ways there are of arranging N distinct values. So, how many ways are there of making these A's distinct? Well, the, I could label this as a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, all the way to a n minus k, and b1, b2, b3, b4, all the way to bk. And now, instead of me having either an a bracket or a b bracket, I've got an a1 bracket, an a2 bracket, an a4 bracket, an a5 bracket, an a3 bracket, an a n minus k bracket, but I've also got a b1 bracket, a b2 bracket, a b3 bracket, a b4 bracket, all the way up to a bk bracket. All my brackets are now distinct. So initially, with my A brackets and my B brackets, the only way I could tell a difference between brackets is in its position, but also whether it was an A bracket or a B bracket. But now, I can tell the difference between each and every one of my labels for my brackets. So, so now I've got N brackets, and now I've got N distinct labels. This means, how many choices are there for my first bracket. Well, I've got n distinct labels, and since each of them are different, that means I've got n choices for my first bracket. And now, say I choose b3. 
I've lost one of my labels. So, once I've assigned a label, say I put B3 here. So now for my second bracket, I've got N minus one choices since I've already used up one choice in my first bracket because I cannot repeat a label now. Each of my labels are different and once a label has been assigned, I can't reassign that label because I choose exactly one term from each bracket. Each label can only be chosen once. So say now I pick A2. Now, I've used up two labels, so now I've only got n minus two labels left, so my third bracket has n minus two choices given the fact that I've used up two choices in my first two brackets. But for every way there is of me choosing a label for my first bracket, there are n minus, way, n minus one ways of me choosing a label for my second bracket. So if there are n ways, and to of choosing a label for my first bracket, and there are n minus one ways of me choosing a label for my second bracket. This means in total, for me choosing two distinct labels for my first and second bracket, there are n times n minus one ways. Because for each one of my n ways, there are n minus one unique selections in a sort of probability type of vibe. So now my third bracket, again, given that there are n times n minus one ways of me choosing my first two elements and that there's n minus two choices for my third bracket, we multiply. So now this is times n minus two and so on. My Say I've selected a three, now I've got n minus three, n minus four, and I keep multiplying these numbers. And say I've used up all my labels. And I'm on my second last bracket. So now I've only got two brackets left and only two labels left. So that means I've only got two possibilities for my penultimate bracket. And say I use up BK. Now I've only got one label left for my final bracket. And that means there's only one choice given I've already assigned N minus one labels. So that means for my final bracket, I am left with no choice but to put A1 there, given that I've already assigned my labels in a certain way. Now, I've used up my N labels, and since my labels are now distinct, my N distinct labels being assigned into N distinct brackets, the number of ways of me doing this is known as N factorial, the product of the first N natural numbers, the first N positive integers. So how can I use this well in reality in this order i'm acting as though the first a i choose is from my final bracket and then my second a is from my second bracket it's like here i'm assuming for n factorial for there to be n factorial dis ways of choosing my brackets it's as though me multiplying the first bracket then the third bracket so the first bracket having an A and a third bracket having an A, here, in this, that would be my A1 bracket, that would be my A2 bracket. Or, that could also be, that could be my A1 bracket and that could be my A2 bracket. I'm counting them in two different ways. But in reality, they're both the same way. They both denote the same way. In reality, I do not have these labels. So if I write them out again, BK, A1. In reality, I do not have these labels. So, we must divide by the number of ways there are of me assigning labels. Because say B3, A2, A3, BK, A1, that's equivalent, that's an equivalent choice for me, in reality, to BK, A, N minus K, A5, dot, 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 and A5. In reality, those are the same, but in n, when I've counted my n factorial ways, I've counted these as though they're different. So, how many ways are there of me assigning these labels to my a's and b's? Well, it works in a similar way. So, when I made my NA's, 
or n minus k a, sorry. When I put numbers onto them, my numbers are distinct from one another, right? So those are my n minus k distinct labels now. And I'm putting n minus k distinct labels into n minus k slots. In a similar way of me putting n distinct labels into my n brackets, which were my slots. Now my a's are my slots. Because the a's are blank a's that need to be labelled. So there are n minus k factorial ways, because there are n minus k I could integers for me to assign to this first day. I could say that's a4, n minus k. I could say that's a n minus k. That's times n minus k minus 1. And so on and so on and so on. 5. Where well, I can't repeat any labels. And then I'll finally say I'm ending up with a2 as my final one. So, m, k, and similarly, this works for b. All my b's. I've got k integers now, which are distinct labels that I can select from to make these b's distinct. So there's three, two, bang, bang, k, k minus one, something in the middle, could be five, one. So there were k choices initially, then I lost my label of three. I used up three as an integer, so I've only left with k minus one integers, and so on and so on and so on. Until finally, I was only left with one as my final label, or my final integer that counts as a label. So m of k is equal to n factorial, but the number of ways I've overcounted these is the number of ways of me assigning labels. Because in reality, if I remove those labels, they're the exact same thing. And the number of ways of me distinct adding labels to these b's and a's is n minus k factorial times k factorial. And this is why m of k is equal to n factorial over n minus k factorial times k factorial, or otherwise known as n choose k on your calculators and in general mathematical terms. So this means, now that I know what these coefficients are, and they work for all k in the range 0 to n, this means a plus b to the power of n is equal to n choose 0, and now, if I let n factorial be the number of ways of me arranging n objects in a line or choosing n distinct ob or placing n distinct objects into n slots or n different slots, well, then zero factorial would just be how many ways there are of me placing zero objects into zero slots. Well, if I, that means there's nothing to do, but nothing to do is one possible way. So it's like the number of, number of ways of me arranging objects and distinct objects in a line. If there's no object, my line's blank, but that's still a way of me arranging them. It's just that there's nothing there, it's blank. So zero factorial is one. And n choose zero, how many ways are there of me choosing zero objects? Well, there is one way, I chose nothing. So, 0 factorial is equal to 1. So I could say n choose 0 is also equal to 1 because it will be n factorial over 0 factorial times n factorial. They cancel out. You're left with 1 over 0 factorial equals 1 over 1 is equal to 1. That's okay. Hopefully I've explained that well enough. Please let me know in the comments if I haven't. So, a plus b to the power of n is equal to n choose 0 times a to the power of n b to the power of 0, plus n choose 1, a to the power of n minus 1, b to the power of 1, and so on, and so on, and so on. It's in your formula booklet for, I think AQA is the one I'm doing. And this is a general and most important term, n choose k times a to the power of n minus k, b to the power of k, plus dot dot dot, plus n choose n, a to the power of 0, b to the power of n. And... This is why the binomial theorem works and how we can come up with the choose function 
and why that truth function applies in this context. Hopefully, having understood why binomial expansion works, you now feel more comfortable actually doing questions on it. Hopefully you understand this. So thanks for watching this video. Feel free to like, share, subscribe. Do what you feel is best. Um, please let me know if I can explain anything a bit better because I think I could. Yeah. Thanks for watching this video.